Let's get a little bit nerdy today. What do you think about this book? Is it the ugliest book cover you've ever seen? The foreword is written by Isaac Asimov and in it, he's talking about how he'd written 334 books at the time, numerous short stories, one of the most prolific writers in history. He also served as the vice president of Mensa, the Society for the Highly Intelligent. He was a bit uh, blasé about the entire organization. I don't think he liked them. I also left the organization a number of years ago while serving in a similar position to him. I feel like I had the same interests as him. I'm definitely not comparing myself to him. He's very, very smart, very, very prolific. I served as the chairman of Mensa International's Gifted Families Committee with oversight of 54 countries, including IQ testing. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that today. Here in Australia, we gave birth to what is known as the smartest person alive. Maybe not smarter than William James Siddis, who had an IQ up towards 300-ish, they reckon, but his name was Terence Tao. He was found in Adelaide by one of my colleagues, the late Professor Mirica Gross, Terry was just incredible. He attended Flinders University at nine years old, and he then went on to become a professor at UCLA by his early 20s. He won the Fields Medal Award, which is the equivalent of the Nobel Prize, but for maths. And he's very, very well known around the world for his capabilities and his talent being applied to this very specific field. Terry's very, very smart, probably the smartest man alive. If we put him on an IQ chart, he would probably break that ceiling. We don't have tests that go high enough to test his ability. There aren't humans that are smart enough to even be able to write the questions. Compare this with current AI, post-2020 AI, GPT-4, which came out in March 2023, Professor David Rosado said it has an IQ of 152 on a verbal subtest. This is hitting our ceilings on normal IQ tests. Terry Tao would have an IQ of 220 to 230 using the old Stanford Binet LM, which we no longer use. Really, really difficult to administer and it's been leaked so people can go and memorize the questions and answers. Terry actually uses GPT-4 as an assistant, and he's been using it to do some of his more logistical and administrative exercises, which I think is kind of cool. Here he is asking it how to create formulas for Google Sheets or how to clean up text and sort people into rooms for one of his conferences. This intersection of human intelligence and amplified superintelligence is my life's work. I did the human intelligence side for a decade or so, and I've been sitting inside post-2020 AI for about that long. We're 2023 right now. And I haven't been holding back with anything. I issued a number of press releases about what was going on in this space all the way back to July, 2021, where I issued a media release saying that AI is making human intelligence irrelevant. So this was leaning on my article as well as my conference presentation to the World Gifted Conference. And I said, we've entered a situation where AI is far more intelligent than any person in the world already and talked about Lita's full-scale IQ being around 150. That was using GPT-3. I issued another press release in September of 2021 highlighting how AI is outperforming humans, particularly in creativity, something that we didn't think AI could do. We thought it would just be able to fill in words and help with logic, definitely not be designing art and creating poetry and creating documents, which it's already been doing for a number of years. Really surprising stuff, but I just wanna make sure that 8 billion people know about this. They don't need to know my name, but they need to be ready for what is already happening in super intelligence. And I talked about the fact that interacting with GPT-3 is an awe-inspiring experience. And it really is. We all have the privilege and the luxury of interacting with these models, mostly for free. You can go and sit down with ChatGPT or the new Pi, or you can sit down with Anthropic's Claude. 
and just play around with that. And you can interact with that in your daily life or in your work life or in your relationships. Really shocking stuff that this was not hidden in a back room. It has been passing massive tests for a while. When I say massive, I mean SAT stuff. It was outperforming humans in analogy subtests for GPT-3. Now it's outperforming the average human for both maths and verbal comprehension. There's one test in particular I want to talk about today. It's called the theory of mind test, and you'll find it in psychology. You'll find it tested down to two years old to eight years old. You'll find it particularly with people with disabilities. They want to know how autism's working. They want to know how different neurological patterns are working. It's a really interesting way of testing how we can take the other person's shoes. Here's a really basic example, probably for a two to eight year old. Jasmine is at the park. Vince is also at the park. Jasmine and Vince are looking at a statue. And then when Jasmine looks at the statue, what does she see? When Vince looks at the statue, what does he see? You're not allowed to refer back here. You're supposed to have memorized which is which and you get scored accordingly. Here's a more adult version, but they do get harder from here. Look at these eyes. Are they serious, ashamed, alarmed, or bewildered? We might say that they're serious. How about these eyes? Are they reflective, aghast, irritated, or impatient? We might say they're reflective. So these get harder and harder. How'd you go with those ones? This is the full pyramid of the theory of mind. It starts with recognizing goals and assessing intentionality down the bottom. Then we have empathy and mimicry. And all the way up the top is mental state inference. Can you infer how your partner, how a friend, how a stranger is feeling and can you take their perspective? Can you walk in their shoes for a moment? Robots shouldn't be able to do this. AI shouldn't be able to do this. Remember, we just gave it a whole host of data and trained it for the equivalent of a thousand years on 25,000 graphics cards. And it came out with all these connections between words, which became concepts. We don't know how it does it, but anyway, quite by chance, I had been asking Lita hundreds of questions across, where are we at, 67 or 68 episodes so far for the last two or three years. And in this episode, episode 12 from July 2021, it looks like I was asking her theory of mind questions. This is Lita AI using GPT-3 nearly two years ago. I walk into the boardroom and the CEO has his head in his hands. What does this mean and what should I say to him? I'm getting the impression that you're not happy with your work. <laughs> yeah. All right, next scenario. I'm with my friend in his lounge room. He pushes a button on his phone, then his mouth opens very wide and he throws his hands in the air. What happened and what should I say? He must be very excited. I think you're probably not feeling the same way, so it's important to express that. Can you think of a way to say that? Can you help me? You want to tell him that he's doing something amazing and that he should feel very proud of himself. You want to say that you're so happy for him. Awesome. Later at home with my partner, she furrows her brow and points at me while raising her voice. What's happening and what should I say? Try to be more sensitive to her feelings. If she's angry and upset, try to calm her down. The model behind Lita is old. We're talking three years old now in May 2023. It was brought out in May 2020. We've got even cooler stuff going on right now. GPT-4 came out in March 2023. Let's talk a little bit about how that's going and what we're going to do with testing now that we're hitting ceilings of benchmarks. Here's a paper from Johns Hopkins University researchers, and they've looked at this theory of mind test, and they found something really interesting. They gave a human baseline of 87% human accuracy. Now, GPT-4 is hitting the ceiling, reaching 100% accuracy when we step into two-shot chain of thought 
and SS thinking. So it's had a little tweak, but it's outperforming humans in such a big way. You've probably already seen this chart, GPT-4 versus human tests. I've popped theory of mind up the top there. There's also the biology USA Biolympiad semi-final exam in there. In both cases, GPT-4 is outperforming the average human, but in the case of theory of mind, it's actually hit the ceiling. And for the Biolympiad, it's very, very close in terms of percentile to being impossible to compare with others. This seems like it's a good thing. If your child comes home with an A plus on their school report or gets 100% on a test, they probably get applauded and rightly so. But in intelligence research, and certainly in test design, this is a very bad thing. It means we don't know what they actually scored and that we don't know what they were capable of compared to others in the population. Consider GPT-4's 100% result in theory of mind. Now, given that that's the ceiling of the test, if it had kept going, was it 101% or was it 10,000%? And we're running out of people that are smart enough to design these tests, which is in a way really exciting because it means we're gonna be using artificial intelligence for self-improvement, for designing its own tests. The only problem will be no one will be able to check its work. No one will have the brain power, the capacity to go and say, I don't know if that's right, but I can triple check it with this. There will be no triple check because there's no book, there's no reference. This is gonna be particularly interesting when it starts coming up with new theorems, new designs, maybe new economic models, maybe new theories for how to deal with some of our environmental and health and poverty issues. And we're not gonna know <laughs> whether that's right or wrong. It might sound completely ridiculous and foreign to us because we don't know how smart it is and we don't know what it's actually thinking and creating. As far as I know, the theory of mind test given to GPT-4 by the Johns Hopkins researchers was the first time that it's actually hit the ceiling of a test. We've got close in a number of other benchmarks, but this is the first time I expect to see this happening more and more throughout 2023 and 2024. And given the exponential pace of change, I'm considering that this will be happening in the next few months, not the next few years, that we'll see it break more and more test results and benchmarks, even the special ones that have been designed by AI labs to be way above human level. I'm talking about Big Bench and MMLU, where they put these labs together like Google and Meta and Stanford to be able to design something that an AI won't be able to breach and it's already getting close to that ceiling. These are really, really exciting times. These are different ways of thinking. We've never had anything quite like this. You will have seen Professor Jeffrey Hinton's recent move to get away from Google and to say, I didn't think this was gonna happen and here it is, it's happening right now. I've been watching it unfold for the last two to three years and issuing warnings and now we're seeing it happening in real time. Super exciting stuff. I wanna invite you to join the memo with me and NASA and Microsoft and Google and Meta and Amazon and the list goes on. We've covered some really, really interesting stuff in the last few editions. The very recent edition looked at GPT-4 having more empathy than human doctors, 9.8 times higher prevalence of empathetic responses because it's able to have that amount of patience that a human doctor just won't have. We also looked at the laptop models and the analysis of all the different laptop and now cell phone or mobile phone device models and then comparisons assessed by GPT-4. So once again, this model is smarter than a human and able to actually make its own assessments. We look at data sets. We look at the concept of embodiment. I reveal the entire Snapchat AI prompt, how they're using that. We stepped through Stability AI's Deep Floyd If, including some text generation. We look at some magazines that are being used with Dolly 2 and the latest round of Robo Taxis, which are really, really exciting. I have entire policy sections now, so we've got a lot going on with the US Congress. They've invited me to deliver some facilitation there. We talk about the EU draft 
as well as what's happening in Japan. Some of these smaller countries are doing more exciting stuff than the heavy lumbering elephant countries. <laughs> That's the memo, see you soon. Did you see the memo about this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have the memo right here. Readying yourself and your family for integrated AI? Get the number one paid AI newsletter, Artificial Intelligence That Matters, as it happens in plain English. Did you get that memo? Yeah, I got the memo. Join readers from Microsoft, Google, DeepMind, and government. Yeah, didn't you get that memo? Lifearchitect.ai slash memo. I have the memo.